This is Bruce Bochy, and you're listening to The Ranger Report. The Ranger Report. Yeah, The Ranger Report. If you want the inside scoop, listen to The Ranger Report. Oh, here we go. This is the Ranger Report podcast. News, insights, predictions, interviews, and information about the Texas Rangers from the major leagues to the minor leagues. And now, here are your hosts, Ben Dieter and C.J. Berryman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ranger Report podcast. I am Ben Dieter. You can find me on Twitter at bdieter 75 I am CJ Berryman. You can find me at CJB underscore RR on that X rated app. And I am Tyler Nielsen, and you can find me on whatever that app's called at TPN 1983. <laughs> I said Twitter X, what a, yeah, whatever it's called. Who knows? It's actually anymore. worse than X rated, you know? <laughs> It, it is. actually is. It actually is. All right. By the way, we are uh, part of the Fans First Sports Network, brought to you on the Premier Health Solutions. Uh, studio studio thank you i forgot how to say studio uh, of course walton's walton's mm-hmm. everything but the meat we love walton's um, i had two better burger seasoning burgers tonight they were good delicious all right and we uh, i wanted to start out tonight guys the alds is over i mean how bright mm-hmm. is baltimore's future <laughs> oh adley rushman oh on top, I mean, rookie of the year on their team you know best catcher that was second in the all-star yeah. game. what an amazing team i mean what a story to lose mm-hmm. like they did, and next year the way they're going to triumph over air. Okay, guys. hey, I mean, hey, did they talk about? Did they talk about Baltimore a little too if much? If I've got series? money, if I'm a betting man over the next three years, I'm putting it all on on Baltimore. <laughs> did the Tyler? Did they go a little overboard? It was ridiculous every single game. Talking about their bright future, look at our team. <laughs> our future looks brighter than theirs, in my opinion. Well, this is not a slide against Baltimore. We are making no, 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 no. Baltimore does have a bright future. They do. They do have yeah. a really bright future. Don't get me wrong. Now, but if you didn't know, ask John Smoltz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the 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 Baltimore they do have a bright future, but the Rangers' bright future is right now as they advance to the ALCS. They're by both. Sleeping. I can see them meeting each other in the playoffs. I mean, here's year a stat on year. Over oh yeah, I think it's going to be. I think they'll see each other. Mm-hmm. You know, at least four or five times over the next uh, over the next five six years. I think you'll see a lot of that. Um, I really do. So seriously though, a stat that got me, and I like this, is the Rangers have trailed in the playoffs for one inning. One inning, and it was about five and a half minutes. I think was one. That. Yeah, I think it was less than it was less than eight minutes. They trailed yeah. for less than eight minutes. So I mean, yep. how? How did this team turn around? Like, is it is it Bochi? Is it all Bochi? Or do you apparently think... it was Creed? Apparently it was Creed. That's right. We need to talk about that too, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 take this show higher after we Jared, talking yeah. about that. <laughs> Jared Sandler took that one to the next level. He was every I mean, one of his every one of his tweet. I'm sorry, every one of his exes or post, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> was about Creed and getting that getting all involved. Man, he was all about it. I mean, the Rangers have come into the playoff with their arms wide open. I mean, it's just been, they, <laughs> it's been pretty amazing, you know. Been to the master of injecting whatever. I mean, I'm telling you what, if they lose, it'll be because they created their own prison. Is all I'm saying. They, they beat themselves. So true. And like right, you I'm, said, I don't have a I don't have a rhyme or reasoning behind the success in the postseason right now. But whatever's working, something's working, and hopefully this stretch you know them being off for what what is going to be four or five days mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be I think, that's the only thing that kind of you know makes me a little bit nervous but i also think the rest is good because, but you look at baltimore they had that rest and they came yeah, in and looked completely three out flat. of the four teams that passed yeah, but so, so did the astros yeah. and they they pretty much yeah, did the sure. twins yeah so and the astros, that mean- the astros the astros mean- have had the same rest we have so yeah does that mean we should start bitching about having too big of a break I mean, I think I mean you notice all the all the journalists uh, that were doing that were yeah. people that covered the teams that got eliminated. Mm-hmm. So I mean, right. don't have a six point seven ERA and you probably won't lose the series. Yeah, have none of your starters go five innings. Don't yeah, let don't, don't let beat. back to back to back to back home runs in the third inning. Right, and I, you know yeah. I make it sound like the Orioles came out flat, but a lot of that's you know credit to the Rangers pitching. I mean, the yes. pitching kept them in check. I mean, our starting pitching was really really good. You know, Montgomery didn't have his best stuff, but he did enough to get, allow our hitters to he, you know keep he, them in the yeah. game. He battled so, in that game, man. He got and still got four. 
and Words. yeah, Tyler hit that right. on the head. I mean, he didn't. Yep. You could tell. You could tell inning number one. He didn't have his good stuff. And you thought sometimes that stuff works itself out as they get you know a couple innings in, and it just never did for Montgomery. But he battled. I mean, gave up nine hits, and right. just kept it in, kept it in check, and and let the offense do its thing. So uh, that's all you can ask for. I mean, hell, like like you said, <laughs> only trailed for one half inning. There, we only yeah. trailed for one half inning in that in, in three games against a 100 plus win team. Yeah, I so. mean, if you if you look at it, you know the the way they played, uh, you know, it was a place only blind men could see that that they were pitching better than uh, oh yeah better than the other. I mean, here's the deal: pitching wins championships. Mm-hmm. Offense helps. The Rangers have both going strong right now. I mean, right. if you have an ERA under two and a half, you know, for so far for five games, and you're scoring an average of six runs a game you're going to sweep every series. I mean, mm-hmm. if you can do that, I mean, if they do that against Houston, they're going to sweep Houston. Yep. If you're that's, giving up, if you're well giving up less than two runs a game and you're scoring five, you know, I mean, do the math. You, if you win, if you score five and they score two, you win every single time. That's very well said. And like I said, you, I mean, you hit it right on the head. Yeah. I mean, they're hitting on all cylinders and it's at the time they need to be hitting at all cylinders. And hopefully that momentum can carry over to the Astros because we've, no, I mean, we're honest fans about it. The Astros have had our number and it's not mm-hmm. just this year. They have owned us. Oh yeah. And, but this is the time. It doesn't matter about the regular season. That's yeah. all in the past. This, this season's done. It's postseason now. So every game it's a clean slate. So hopefully, you know, just take one out of two. I'm not going to be selfish and greedy and ask for to take both like they did in Baltimore, yeah. but you take one out of two and I feel very comfortable, confident in that series for the Rangers. Yeah, I agree, Tyler, because it, it flips field, home field advantage back to you. Exactly. Because exactly. you get three games at Globe Life, and then if you take two out of three there, you just got to go back and win one at Houston. But the way the Rangers are playing, have played the, the first two rounds, it doesn't matter who they played against. Right. They were, not, they were going to beat whoever it was. That's just right. the way it was. That's how hot they were. It just didn't matter. It didn't matter if it was Houston, if it was the the nineteen ninety six uh, New York gang. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. It would not have mattered regardless. To play devil's advocate here, though, Houston is the only team the Rangers are going to face so far who came into the playoffs hot. Like That's Baltimore true. was slumping, Tampa Bay was slumping, Houston. They're hitting what, like seventeen home runs a game right now? It's ridiculous. So yeah, like, they, they hit a bunch against us last time when they they swept us in, I mean, in Arlington. So Houston, I know is a brave, in, Houston is coming in hot. A brave I know a brave coming in hot. Yeah. It's hit his hottest streak of the season right now, and yeah. of course you've got um, Jordan Alvarez, and that now, dude. Tuve, Kyle Tuve owns the Rangers. Kyle, no, Kyle, I know Tuve, Kyle Tucker, and Bregman. Yep. I mean, they they've got. I mean, they're stout. They are, <laughs> and their pitching was has been pretty damn good as well so it's just gonna i'm excited to see uh, global life is already filled out i mean yeah it's sold out for room only it, it's well, all, yeah. you're, you're nobody's getting in <laughs> if you ain't got a ticket now you're you're screwed or you're but, paying a lot of money or you're you're scalping you're getting a scalping yep. ticket yeah so uh, and and even in houston there's there's rangers fans down there too i mean it's but either way it's going to be an intense crazy atmosphere every single pitch yeah no matter where this thing's played either here in, in globe life or or at minute Maid, it's gonna be insane and it man to, to watch that that was the first playoff series that the rangers have played at that new ballpark and it yeah. went i think it, this might be my world series this series right here if we <laughs> might be the Astros, be. because well you know what now that the braves are eliminated and the dodgers I think whoever wins this series, I'm going to put it put it out there right now. I think whoever wins this series will go on to win the World Series. Ooh. I would not be surprised. I like it. Here, here's here's the deal. I think I don't think you're going to see a lot of three to two games in this series. Oh no! I think the pitching stat that makes the least mistakes is the team that's going to win. You're going to see a lot of nine to seven, eight to six, eleven to nine games. Whichever team can hold on is the team that's going to win. I, and I don't think they're all going to be that high. But you're not going to see a lot of three to two games in this series. You're going to see. And I think, teams, and I think errors are, are going to play a big part. Errors, like Rangers defense, defense. defense. That's what Rangers have them on defense. Defense has right. been incredible for Texas. And season. see, that was a low. That was a low point or low. Uh, it, it was an issue we thought for the Rangers coming into the season. Yeah. And it's and it looked that way about the first quarter of the way through, and then all I don't know what changed, but. Seeger's been awesome. Josh Young's played th- gold caliber, cold, gold glove 
caliber third base. Marcus Simeon, same at second base. Nate Lowe has been – sorry, Nathaniel Mamalo. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe is uh, – he played his best at first base. We've – by far that we've seen and we know the outfield can track down anything. I mean, and, and they have all got arms, a almost <laughs> if he, if he would have had a better, uh, better jump on the, on the, that ball the other night, he probably yeah. throws it, throws a strike, but uh, it, yeah, the defense has been awesome. And that's where we have the leg up uh, yep. big game. Nate, I love having him in game two. Yep. Uh, game three, I mean, with with let's there, talk Max the, Scherzer. the rumor, the rumor is that okay, the rumor is first of all that he's on the roster. Mm-hmm. They haven't made that decision yet, but the rumor is he's healthy and ready to go. And the other rumor is that he's game three. So you know, if you have, I mean, you have Montgomery, Evaldi, Scherzer. That's a pretty good one, two, three going into the series. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, top of the order, I think Verlander's better than Montgomery. Oh yeah, yeah. Even at his age now, I still think Verland is better. Game yeah. two, mm-hmm. game two. I think we have the edge with Avaldi. Game three, if Scherzer starts, I think we have the edge with Scherzer. Ah, uh, if so Scherzer think, is if Scherzer is Scherzer. You think that Avaldi is ahead of Valdez right now? I do. Okay. If he pitches like he did in the la- in his last start, he was completely unhittable. Yeah, completely was, unhittable. Built. If he built. can, if he can hit his spots like he did in that game. He's completely unhittable. And the Rangers. Oh, yeah. When Evaldi's on, there's no doubt. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's why I give him the edge because he's hot right now. You know, that's why. But, you know, he makes two or three mistakes and that game will get out of hand real fast. It's it's going to depend on how how good his grip is on that splitter. Because you saw in the middle innings against uh, against uh, Baltimore, that splitter wasn't doing a whole lot. And so yeah, that's when he got into a little bit of trouble. He yeah. got into this couple jams, but then he went back in the dugout, and I don't know if he he went back and 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 watched some watched for what what he looked like or whatever. But then he came out the next half inning, and the it's, the slider was the same, the cutter was the same, no, nothing was happening. They were just hanging there, but he was able to battle with the four seamer and and get out of the inning without a whole bunch of damage. And then he went out the next inning. He, he went in the dugout and figured out whatever it was, and then yeah. everything was working the way it's supposed to. But if he does that against Houston. He's I I can tell you right now he won't get out of there with just one run. No, 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 no. Oh, he, so, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. You look at I mean, and we like nerd talk. I'm gonna go nerd out a little bit. I think that game all comes down to serious, like you're saying, but I'll reiterate, location. Mm-hmm. If he can put his pitches where he wants to, if he can start in the middle and drop that out of the zone like he was doing against Baltimore, I don't care who you are. The Rangers couldn't hit that pitch against him either. I don't right. care if you're the best offensive hitting team in the league. If he's hitting his spots, if Avaldi can nail those corners and if the ump gives him a little bit on the outside, he'll dominate that game. He, if, if he gets he, into trouble, like you said, Though he'll give up two, three home runs in one inning. And if you look at his pitch sequencing against Baltimore, it was pretty strictly sl- uh, splitter fastball, splitter yep. fastball. But he has an excellent slider and a curve. So he has things that he could have, I think, if, you know, he. He can he can turn to the going soft with the curveball and the slider when yeah. when something you know it, whatever the case may be he can he can locate it on the corners uh, like you were talking about with the splitter though if he's throwing that shin shin high and below it's going to be a tough day for the Astros. Yeah, yeah I, I truly believe that this series is going to come down to location, mm-hmm. like location I of pitches agree. on both sides. But yeah, because I mean, both sides you make the you make an inch. You fear an inch, o- inch off, it's going to get killed. People don't realize this who haven't paid attention all year, but these two offenses, both of them, make you pay dearly for any mistake whatsoever. That's and exactly the fun, right. The fun thing is you and me and Tyler, we can see as soon as that pitcher throws it and you can see he missed a spot, you just like, look, okay, this is gone. You know that there's a mm-hmm. you know, 30%, 40% chance that that ball is going to get knocked out of the ballpark, and it's the same right. for Houston. So th- this series, I already I already told Mrs. Ranger Report that I'm pretty much going to be on the edge of the seat and in a bad mood for all the games because every pitch I'm going to be sitting on there thinking, all right, 
you got to hit your spot. You got to hit your spot. Yeah. And, and what's funny is me and Tyler say that shit out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whether we're watching the game with each other or we're watching it alone, it don't matter. Uh, you Maybe know, we should game, FaceTime during these games. Yeah. Sit like, there and watch them together. <laughs> like you said, though, we can tell. I mean, right when the, of course, yeah. we know our pitchers real well. Yeah. And so whenever we see it and we see how the release is and we see the location and we're like, oh, crap. Or we're watching the opponent and they miss and it's in one of our hitters weak spots we're like oh it's you know crush it you know yeah. <laughs> if they miss it's like damn you missed that one and it was good to see I'll, i'm gonna kind of change gears here yeah to see nate low hit that home run and you could yeah. see the on relief. his face yeah. i mean he just went yeah you yeah. know got the monkey off and yeah. his bat has his bat speed has been just slow that's why they were just throwing yep. him fastballs they could throw you could throw it down the middle you could throw it wherever. yeah he couldn't hit it but he still – how many pitches did he have in that one at bat? He did it in the final. Was it 14? 14 or 15. I think it was like more like 16 or 17. I think yeah, you're right. He, he, tur- he turned that inning around. He did. Yeah, I, he I was had, fighting, had and fighting and fighting and fighting. I was like, what? And that bat, I could not believe it. I was like, regardless of what happens, I mean, you yeah. know, and I think he ended up – Yeah. Did, did he end up walking? Or did no, he, no, he, 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 he flew out. He flew out. Or he flew out, he, he but still it, wasn't that bad. Well. Yeah. yeah. He won. It didn't matter. Well, because he wore out the pitcher and then, you know – and I mean, good lord! You walk Seager, and Garber's hitting missiles everywhere. Mm-hmm. Following him, you got Evan Car. You got Evan Carter hitting missiles everywhere. You got Josh. I mean, who do you? How That's, can you pitch around one person to get to another on this team? If you're not pitching well, you can't you're in trouble. One through nine. You cannot yeah. pitch through this lineup. One through nine. Our, I mean, Leody, every player. Leody, 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 Leody. Yep. That's and, what I'm saying. That 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 hit by Garver after they walked Seager was just beautiful. I just don't like Chapman coming out in the eighth. I feel it scared don't, the crap out I, of me, man. <sighs> All right, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the bullpen. If John yeah. Gray makes the team, it'll be out of the bullpen. The Rangers yeah. have said that, so he won't be starting. Martin Perez has not been used yet. Not once. Nope. Has not been used. Uh, Cody Bradford was brilliant when he, he came in for very last, game, last game for Montgomery. Yeah. He came in was brilliant. He looked so sharp. Spores, other than. He looks like, missing missing eight of the first nine pitches in that one inning. He's been he's looked good since then. Yep. Chapman, I, I'm with Tyler. I get so nervous every time he steps out onto the the, the field. I text. It's like which Chapman are you getting? I, I know. Text, yeah. Yeah. Ahead, I, texted, I texted Tyler after the first at bat of Chapman, and I said I miss Cole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, and his it, track record against the Astros is dreadful. It's not good. No, I mean when he was with the Yankees, with the Cubs, with the Cubs, and then this season when he came out against the Astros in that game that we were leading by two runs and he gave up the three run homer. I mean his he cannot pitch against the Astros. The thing is, if you see him drenched in sweat after the first batter, he doesn't. It's have not it. good. He doesn't yeah. have it. He you came can, out. Uh, he came out of the bullpen, sweating. Sw- well, I know. Sweat. Yeah. I was I was trying not to say throat. something naughty with the sweat part. <laughs> I've got so many. He was sweating a lot. Anyway, yes. yeah, just warming up. He was just pouring sweat. It's like crap. Yeah. You know, he's already wore out. It looks like, but but I think Leclerc. bullpen. I trust Spores. I trust golly Jose Leclerc. Man, good gracious, he's been amazing. The dude that we thought around. in 2020 that we were going to have going forward is finally yep. here. Yep. Dude, he and he looks like, I mean, it looks like he's in the backyard throwing a ball with his dad. I mean, he doesn't look like does. stressed at all. It's funny oh. you look at you look at him and you look at Chapman, Chapman. and the opposites. Yeah, polar opposites. Chapman's out there sweating like crazy, and Leclerc ain't dropping not a, not one bead of sweat. That's a great point, CJ. It's night and day difference because you can tell when uh, Chapman comes in, he does not feel comfortable out there out there right now, and. The batter sense that you can tell the batter sense it as well. I mean, they're they're going up there and they're not even taking the bat off their shoulders at some points. They're just sitting there looking at him like, I'm gonna sit back and let him throw me until he can throw a strike or at least a couple, get it out of the system because he's so he's so off the beaten path right now. I don't know what's going on if it's in his head or yeah. But hope I mean, but like Ben said, the Astros do own him, and that scared me. And then, so, of course, Spores, Spores, Spores looks like he's trying to destroy whatever gum he has in his mouth every time he's mm-hmm. out there. My goodness, that dude is an aggressive chewer. Yeah, <laughs> he is. I, wonder what he I don't think I could like eat lunch dinner. with that. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I could eat dinner with him. He's just like, 
I mean, he chews so massively crazy. I wonder, would you would you flip flop? This is just spitball in here. Would you flip flop those roles, Spores what? and Chapman? Oh, definitely. I would definitely oh, yeah. have Chapman put, put come Spores in the at eighth inning and yeah. Chapman in seventh. I would inning. definitely do that. I would feel better because, if Bradford coming in the seventh right now. Than well, Chapman, I'm saying put honest. put Chapman in seven. The, the only problem I have with putting Chapman in against the Astros is you have to face three batters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what I would probably do is put Chapman in with two outs in an inning. Yeah, so you Let can, Chapman you can, throw. If he looks terrible, yeah. you don't have to bring him back out the next inning. If he looks dominant, you can bring him back out the next inning. And you can let then, him go a whole inning because you don't want to do back-to-back with him. No, that's what I'm saying. And then let him pitch four, get him yeah. four, let him get four outs. But if he comes in at the bottom of the sixth, you know, pull the starter, bring him in, two outs, and he walks two dudes. Yank him. You don't have to worry about it anymore. He doesn't have to come back in. And then you go to Bradford or you go to Martin Perez or you go to John Gravy's in there or you go ahead and go to Spores or Cody Bradford. You've got all these options in the bullpen. I mean, how did this bullpen all of a sudden become a strength for the most part? And you mentioned a great point too, Ben. We haven't even seen Martin Perez. Mm -mm. And Martin Perez towards the end of the year was coming out of the pen and looking really good. So it's like if you have a struggle with Chapman, which he is struggling right now, I mean, you could always lean on the lefty in Perez, but hopefully it doesn't come down to that point. I mean, I think it will, though. I mean, the bullpen is going to be used. We already know that. I think this yeah. is going to be a really tight series, and I think that's going to be the key cognizance in all this. I think it's going to come down to the bullpen, to be completely yeah. honest. I mean, yeah. I think the bats yeah. are going to be live and well for both teams. Don't get me wrong, but yep. I think if it comes down to the later games, I mean, of course, the bullpen is going to be a major thing. And I saw today – the Astros are leaving off Graveman off their um, yeah. off their roster because they thought he would be better because they left him off the ALDS. Yeah. So and he he was a good pitcher out of the pen for the Astros. So that's kind of a a spark for the Rangers too. You know, I mean, you want to get their best pitchers out of the bullpen. So yeah, hopefully that plays into it as well. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think the Astros if, did it did one themselves on that one, Tyler. Yeah, good point. I think if Gray comes in, he probably replaces Brock Burke, who has not looked good in the playoffs. I would agree. I, agree I think to that. I think if Gray comes and I think the Rangers want Gray to replace Brock Burke right now. Either and I or, love I love Burke as a person and I love him as a player. He's had some moments where he's been brilliant. But in the year, postseason, he was, he was awesome in the postseason, every time he's come in, two different times, he has looked lost. Yeah. So y'all do see Scherzer. I mean, from what I'm hearing from y'all, because I don't really know. I mean, because I was hearing things that he was going to start in the bullpen. But I guess from what you're hearing, Ben, that he said he was open to going to the bullpen. He was open to whatever. Yeah, role. but the Rangers. I mean. But, yeah. Speculation from several beat writers and the Rangers media release I got kind of implied that if he was on the roster, he would be the game three starter. Yep. Because what they what they said is if he joins the roster, he wouldn't start until Arlington. They didn't say pitch, they said start. Mm-hmm. So that makes and me think that they plan on putting him in as a starter. I believe I'm trying to think of who it was. It might have been Evan Grant said the decision hasn't been made on Scherzer, but if he does get added to the roster, it will be as a starter. Yeah. Did and you I mean, hear what Scherzer said after his last bullpen session? Yes, that was great. He said <laughs> he said it's kind of hard to pitch when you're after you're uh, after being hung over because he did it the day after, day after they clinched. So he said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to pitch hung over. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I love that dude, man. I do yeah. too. Yep, Tyler's Tyler or Tyler. Um, Kane said he's just he he's mad. He's crazy. He said he's just crazy, dude. He said he's crazy. <laughs> well, I told you the story. I don't know if I told it on air with the day I was there. Mm-hmm. And I was standing there for the Bochy press conference and I was in his way. He just put his hand on my shoulder and he goes, excuse me, big man. And I was like, oh, and I stepped aside and he goes, thanks. And he just ran off. And I was like, that was a weird interaction. <laughs> like, you're like, I mean, just, Max Scherzer. Yeah. But I'm like, did Max Scherzer just say, excuse me, big man. I think he did. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big man. That's he, he wasn't lying. So I'm surprised he didn't tug on your beard. Well, I thought, I thought it, I mean, he looked at it. I thought he might reach. <laughs> if that would have happened, <laughs> it would have made my year, man. If he'd been like, never nice wore this beard again. <laughs> your wife so no, luckily say. i'm not i'm not that starstruck with people but uh but no. yeah that's a funny story though it was it was pretty funny i mean he, he's the best major league interaction i've had so far man i wonder if you sat him and austin hedges down at dinner oh one gosh night just with them two man. together they give seem them, like their best friends give, on the team give them I know. they're sitting next to each other yeah and they, they are a, having, a they are having first. i mean they're laughing so hard throughout the game and it seems like them two where i want austin hedges and you know, they got there about the same time. So, yeah. but it seems like they, they hit it off right away. And I don't know if they have a past history of knowing each other or what it is, but it's, it's just fun watching them. And, you know, I, I can care less if Austin Hedges doesn't play another or doesn't no. get another bat or anything. 
he brings that fire to the team that you need. And you could tell it, 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 it goes, it, all the other guys, they can feel it, you know, that energy coming off because he makes it fun. And it's, I mean, it, which it should be fun right now. They haven't yeah. lost in the postseason, so it should be real fun. Mm-hmm. For me, yeah. Austin Hedges is every kid's first game in the major leagues when they see someone hit a home run. Every oh, time a home run is hit, yep. his eyes get like massive. And he's like, like he's never oh, seen one. Like he's never seen a home run. I mean, I know he probably has never hit one, but he's, I don't know, I'm just kidding. But, but I mean, the way he reacts every single time, I mean, you're, like Tyler said, he's the heart and soul of the team. We haven't mentioned him. Why don't we bring him in out of the bullpen? He's got oh, a 0.0 ERA. Exactly. Yeah. Funny, funny thing about uh, Austin Hedges, we were, me and Ty, we were actually watching the game, me and Tyler, where I was on my birthday and uh, they had Austin Hedges in the dugout. And Emily was asking him, you know, about how he is in the dugout. And he said, well, you know, if a guy's going through a slump, believe me, I know what that's like. I've been, a, I've been in a slump my whole career and <laughs> it just, kept yeah. Going. just, yeah, I've been in a slump my whole career. So I know what it's like. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. So you guys did a good job breaking down the, the, the ALDS win in the last episode. Thank you for covering for me. I had to adult and go do big man things. But anyway, um, I mean, we still haven't mentioned one guy's name who probably they wouldn't be here without, and that's Evan Carter. Evan Carter. And I know you guys talked about him. We covered a lot of Evan Carter last. But I'm just saying, just I just wanted to mention, like, if he does it again in the ALCS, how can he not be like the ALCS MVP? If he, I agree. You know, that's if he's like mentioning. 11 for 15 again. You know, gets on base 11 out of 15 times, knocks in six or seven runs. He just turned 21 years old, man. Dude, he's, the dude. Uh, he he is the offensive version of Jose Leclerc. Nothing bugs him. He was the MVP of that series. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm oh, saying, he will. yeah, I agree. I mean, how can you not? I mean, I'm just saying, looking forward to watching him continue because he is unfazed by anything that it's like, he acts like you said, like a 20 year old is like, Oh yeah, man. You know, I'm just in the backyard playing some baseball. Yeah. He's more mature than he acts more mature than Austin Hedges and Max Scherzer. way more mature than Austin. <laughs> yeah. Hedges. And that's, and scary Scherzer, yeah. his, that's scary to think of his ceiling, his potential. Because oh, oh yeah, we're just scratching. Twenty one years old, and he's doing this already, and he's getting postseason experience and doing it in the postseason. I can't imagine what he's going to have under his belt when he has a full season under him, and it's going to be amazing to see him rise. I mean, he already. I mean, people already know his name. You know, even these national broadcasters. I mean, they they yeah. now. I give them credit on that. They did give a little credit where credit was due to Evan Carter. They did, yeah. But they also reverted it back to Gunder Henderson. You know, yeah, they did. Like, of course, they did. Come. But I was no, like, but you, I mean, he's never going back down Josh again. Young. He's yeah. never going back down again unless he gets injured or something. But right. he's he's a major leaguer now. And the thing is, <laughs> you're right. Like, think I read a great article about him, and I, I wish I could remember who it was. I'll try to link it if I can find it again in the description of this was show. Is it the but, one that was on the website? No, no, this was someone else wrote. It was okay. a scouting one. And it said, how did the Rangers find Evan Carter? Yeah. And he said, they mm-hmm. simply out-scouted everybody. Mm-hmm. Like Literally. they out-scouted they every team in baseball and found Evan Carter. Like he had, every team had a chance to take him like three times before the Rangers took him. Yeah. But, and when they took him, the guys in the draft room doing the, the broadcast didn't even know who he was. Had no I was even I was sitting there when I, when we got drafted Evan Carter, I was scratching my head. I was like, who is this I was kid? too. I was, I was like, what? What? I was like, Evan Carter. I mean, there were so many good players available in round two. I mean, that's I still at, way early in the MLB draft. Yeah, as we yeah, all I looked know. in the and rankings, I like, and I was like, mm, yeah, he's not there. Down, Where down, is this down, guy? Down, 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 yeah. like, uh, he's not even on there. Number one I prospect for the Rangers now. I will never question what our scouting department does. Uh, Kip because Fag, they yeah. find some real studs. And Kip, Kip Fag is brilliant at what he He's does. brilliant, and I will never question anymore. I mean, you can't. how could you question it? You know? Yeah. All right, we got to do it, guys. ALCS, winner and how many games? Balls. I'll take I'll, it first. I'll start with Tyler. Go ahead, Tyler. Winner, how many games? The winner is going to be the Texas Rangers. They're going to be your American League champions, and they're going to take it in six. What do you think, are you CJ? Re- are you ready, I'm, CJ? I'm, do I need to go next? Actually, about, I was going to say the exact same thing. I, and and, and part there. of that, part of that, the reasoning behind that is – the Rangers had that opportunity in a big game six. So we are not going to talk about this time. The fortunes are going to be reversed and they do win in Houston to bring it home. I am going to go a little different than you guys. Um, I see this as a 2010 Rangers versus Yankees. This nice. is the, 
This is the 500 pound gorilla that's been on their back for the last seven years. I don't like it. This team is telling everybody how much better than us they are. And they're not lying. They've been that much better than us for seven straight years. This year, we were one of the best teams in baseball unless we played Houston. Yep, Houston that's dominated correct. the Rangers. Well, we the did Rangers, we swept them, but it was way early in the season. Yeah, I'm saying, Houston. but the rest of the season, Houston, yeah, they got I mean, we won one more game the rest of the season against them. Yep. But we don't you think a lot of that has to do with our injuries that we had? I mean, I'm that's, not saying the Astros yeah, didn't have right. injuries too, but no. you know, towards the end of the year, that's when we were having our injuries during those series against the Astros. And now that we're completely healthy, for the most part, I mean, I feel a lot better coming into this series than how we've finished it up towards the end of the season against the Astros. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's where I'm going. Let me, let me finish. So this is 2010. This is that giant gorilla. I think, and I, this is going to be bold. I think if the Rangers win game one of this series, they win in five. That Okay. I think if the Rangers win wow. game one, in their mind, that monkey is off their back because they already have Houston on the ropes after one game. And are we going to have... Uh, does it go 2-2, two, 1-1-1, two, one, 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 or is it... No, 2-3-2. Two, two, three, two. Three, two. So if they do it in five, they'll win it in Arlington. Okay, so, see, then... Dang, I'm with you, Ben, now because I was thinking it went two, two, one, one, one. No, it's two, three, two. That's so. why I said it's six because I thought they would do it in. No, I think they're going to do it in Texas. So. Yeah, I said that. I said that's why I said earlier when it, when you said if they win one of the of the first two, and I was like, yeah, because it flips home field advantage, right? right and I'm not. Two. I'm not going to go with the sweep. I don't. I, I'm, not three the next I'm not that bold. But I think I think if they win that one, the Astros. I mean, I think you put them on their heels, and they're like, oh man. You know, now we got it like now we got to get serious like they haven't been. But I think they're going to figure out that this is not the Rangers team that they smoked for three straight games in Arlington back in August. Yeah. Right. This is not and I'm not going to freak team. out if we get beat tomorrow. I mean, no. I'm not like I said, no, I still, I still think one out of two. if we, we lose game one, I think they win it in six. So I, I've got them winning it either way. Good. So I think Rangers two American League champions and I'm not ready to profess uh, that that'll be World Series champion yet because Philly is a super hot team right now. Yeah, they always. Well, so is Arizona. I'm telling you though, Philadelphia man is is Philadelphia. They scare me. They, they, they scare came me in almost they as bad as almost as hot as the Rangers. They they. Cassianos right now. Cassianos cannot be pitched to man. That dude, every pitch that is hit thrown to him, he is crushing it. What about like, uh, wow. one more thing I wanted to talk about was that play in that series, the one game Philadelphia lost. Why was Bryce Harper oh fishing in the God. Atlantic Ocean yeah. when that ball was caught back at the wall? I mean, yeah. my goodness. He was a mile and a half away from first base. I think he was almost around third. Whenever that ball came that. in to the infield to the wrong guy. He bobbled it, picked it up, and still had time to throw Bryce Harper at it. Yeah, but that was a I mean, weird, weird, crazy way to end a ball game. And I, I think mean, Harper literally thought there was no way he was going to catch it, and he was trying to score that tying run. He just, man, I think he just got a horrible read on it. He got a horible read on it, but I'll Sound, tell you what. Yeah. So if the Rangers beat Houston, that's a big if. I mean, we all think they will, obviously, but that's a big if because Houston, again. But I just see this as that defining franchise moment where you finally knock off like seven years is enough time. It's time for us to take over this division. 52 years is long enough without winning the World Series, too. That, too, definitely. So, All right, guys, thank you very much. It's been a good show. I am psyched about tomorrow if you guys watch this when we record it. If you don't today, and if you watch it afterward, well, game one's over. So. uh just whenever you watch this this podcast, um, I can't or listen to it. I don't know why you'd want to look at us, but that's a, that's your problem, not mine. Um, anyway, I think it's going to be a great series. I think uh, the Rangers are going to take their fans higher. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. I'm going to go watch thank my you, Notre Dame Irish finished kicking the crap out of USC. Sandler, Have fun. Uh, poor Jared. Go Red Raiders. Yes. Go Tech. Yeah, yeah. Go Tech. See you guys. Thanks for listening to the Ranger Report podcast. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and at therangerreport.com.